We have actually already talked about some distributions. When you graft your histograms, and they looked like this. What was the shape we described that as? Symmetric. Okay, so normal distributions, all the data fits under this nice symmetric, um, we call it like a bell curve. Okay, it's symmetrical. Okay, majority of the data lies in the middle. Okay, and it tells off on either side with equal amounts. Is it data or? Data? That's what we call. No, it's, 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 it's definitely the I have this curve. It's a terrible curve, but it's okay. The very middle is my mean. Average. Well, my average is exactly what an average is. That's where my set of data peaks out, is right there at the mean. Um, symbols for mean, we use a mu. or an X bar, okay? That means mean, mu. We generally use mu to represent a population mean. In other words, if you could take um, actual values from every single um, thing in your study and you could average it together, that would be the population mean. But a lot of times we use a sample because it's not feasible for us. In other words, if I was doing a study on high school students in the U.S., um, how old they are when they got their driver's license. It's not very feasible for me to find every single high school student in the United States and survey them. So instead, I would take a sample to represent, and that would be X bar. So it's not so important that you understand that. We're not going to delve quite that deep, but I do like to make mention of it. Here's what's special about um, standard normal distributions. I have this curve, and within this curve, I have, have y'all ever heard of a standard deviation? I've heard of it. Okay. I'm not going to make you calculate it, but what you do need to understand is that a standard deviation is a measure of variance. How the data is spread out, okay? The bigger the standard deviation, the more it spreads. Because in a normal distribution, 99.7% of every bit of data falls within three standard deviations from the mean. So standard deviation which we're going to use sigma or s. Sigma generally is that population standard deviation whereas s is that sample standard, um, sample standard deviation. That means if I take the mean And I add three standard deviations to it. All right, guys, this is on your test Monday. I need y'all up here. This is important. Somebody has music playing. That's also not appropriate. Or I subtract three standard deviations away, then 99.7% of all my data falls within those two values. Okay. So you have to be given the mean and you have to be given the standard deviation to find that. So for example, if I said the average age of high school students getting their driver's license in the United States is 17, and I said that it has a standard deviation of 0.5 years, then you could from that, you would say, well, that means that 99.7% of the teenagers in the U.S. get their license between, if I add three of those sigmas, what do I get? 18.5. How about if I subtract three of those? 15.5. This is not a realistic set. I just wanted you to see. That would mean that 99.7% of those teenagers in the United States got their license between 15 and a half years old and 18 and a half years old, okay? The bigger that standard deviation is, if the standard deviation was one instead of a half, I would be from, what, three off of 17, so I would be from 14 to, what? Right. 
That's see the mean. difference there? You see yeah. what I'm doing with it? The bigger the standard deviation is, the more it shows me that my data set spreads out. Can you multiply that by three then? Yes. But here's the thing. There's some patterns here. We have what we call, I call them magic numbers. This is my standard normal table. We'll definitely want to write this down, even if you're not a note taker. One standard deviation away from the mean in either direction. Remember, this is symmetrical, okay? What? How much is that? Like 20? What's that little line above the zero? That's the sigma. Okay. Oh, that should be minus. I'm sorry. All right, so one standard deviation away. Like how you know how much that is? Well, we would define x bar and sigma. Are we going to have to define the standard deviation? Mm -mm. In private stats, you would actually have to calculate it. In Algebra 2, we're just kind of getting your feet wet. We're not going to, I'll give it to you. 68%. Is that your music? You can still hear it? Yes. I need you to cut that off. How? Thank you. No, I can still hear it. Cut it off. Now, if this is symmetrical, and it is because I'm telling you it is, then each of those pieces from the blue line to the green contains how much data? The same. Which is? 60 or how, how about this? How do you know it's 64? 34. 34. It's got to be 34 because it's symmetrical. How do you know it's 34? How do you divide by 2? If it's symmetrical and, and the mean is dead in the middle, and 68% of the data is between one standard deviation, then symmetric, if you symmetricize it, as Robert would say. <coughs> All right, let's go two standard deviations out. Two standard deviations out. So this is two and two. Ninety-five percent of all of your data. That's pretty significant. Pretty big in this case. 95% of all your data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So tell me, looking at this, what would the area between the green and the pink be? This one's a little bit harder. Ooh, whatever 95 minus 68. 95 minus 68, which would be what? Uh, 33. 33. So then I need to do what? 95 by 2. Okay. 16.5. It would be 33. 16. It's Yeah. It's 33. Everyone agreed on it. And I just kind of said it. Yeah. What's, it what's 95 minus 68? 27. 27. 27. Half of 27 is? Probably uh, 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. What is it? 13.5. 13. 13. And then I already told you that three standard deviations away contains how much of the data? 99.7. So this is mean plus 3, mean minus 3. 99. Come on. 99.7%. So again, guys, yeah. Where? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You're like, I haven't done the white yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't done the white yet. I'm going to give it to you. All right, guys. If the white is 99.7% and the pink is 95%, how much is contained between the pink and white? Probably uh, 4.7 plus Figure it out. Do it on the calculator and tell me. 4.7%. Divide by two? 2.3. Now, we know that all probability distributions must add to what? 100. Uh, yeah. Bam. Does that add to 100? Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Look, I can't. I can't. Exactly. I can't realistically say that a hundred percent of my data is going to fit in this nice little form. So I've got these little pieces on the end. How much is in those little pieces on the end? X minus three. Somebody. What? Point three percent. Now that's really small because that's point oh. Uh, or 0 0.03, right? 0 0.003 because it's 0.3%. So i got to divide that by 2 for either end. How much is in those ends? 0.015. But let's do it as a percent. 0.15 percent. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. I thought it would have been 0.3%. For both ends. Because it's here to here, but because it's symmetrical, I gotta divide it by two. Oh, we're trying to get to one. Yes, I'm trying to get to hundred. All right, so we're talking about percents because we've been talking about probability. Everybody okay? I have a question. Yeah. Um, the ninety-nine point seven is going to the third deviation. If I asked you, what's the probability in a normal distribution? that you have a value that is less than or equal to, let me see how they set it up for you in here. Um, that. Now probability, we're talking about percentages or we could have a decimal. But what's the probability that I land, if I randomly chose, that I land somewhere less than two standard deviations to the left of the mean? Well, two standard deviations to the left is here. So what's the probability that I'm less than that? Like 2.35. 2.35 plus 0.15, which you're right, 2.5%. Right, so this chart's very important. If you can derive it, you can pull the things off of it. What about if I asked you, what's the probability that I am between between two to the left and one to the right? So exactly, I go two to the left, which is here, and one to the right, which is here, and add these together. So what is that? Sixty-eight plus thirteen point five. You want to ask? You want the thing in the middle? You plot in the middle. Um. Yeah, why, why do you Find in between the two. Why do you do it like that? Do it like what? Like why would you just add one side, like 34? Well, because this one asked me to find in between these two values. So I went to each of those values and I looked and I added the percentages between. Yes. Sigma, standard deviation. Wait, so that's not one. What? No. <laughs> right from my chart. Did I add wrong? What I put? Sorry. What's the percentage that you're between? Two standard deviations left and one standard deviation right. Instead, we'd have to calculate mean, we'd have to calculate standard deviation. But let me set up a problem for you. Let's say, I'm going to get one from the book, I do believe. The blood cholesterol readings for a group of women are normally distributed. So there's my keyword, they're normally distributed. I know they're going to fit under that normal curve, my 68, 95, 99, 7. So they're normally distributed with a mean of 172 and a standard deviation of 14. Uh, see, oh, that's not that hard. Okay. 
I haven't done anything yet. Yeah, you don't know what to do yet. <laughs> yeah, my, what? Okay, so my question to you is, what percent of women, what percent are between 158, 158 and 186? Oh, see? Easy, huh? Yeah, let's do it. So I have to find those magic numbers first, right? I've got the mean, I've got the standard deviation. So if I think about my curve, the middle is going to be the mean, which is 172. And then the right side, the 9972. Well, add 14. 186. 186. Add 14. Add 14. I'm adding a standard deviation each time. So it goes up. I don't understand what the point of standard deviation It tells you how the data is spread because 99.7% of data is between three standard deviations. Actually, you probably will. Subtract 14. Subtract 14 and you get what? 158. Subtract 14. 135. Subtract 14. 132. All right. So my question is, how many are between 158 and 186, 68%. Oh, okay, yeah. 68% of women have a cholesterol reading between 158 and 186. Let's just say with a mean of 82 that the standard deviation was five. Is that fairly spread out or no? That's good enough. Did most people make within the same thing or did they not? No. No, close. What do you think? There's a lot of people. I think it needs to be about 10. And that's really spread out. We got like a if I think about this, here's 82, that's in the middle, right? 10. Plus 5 would be 87. Plus 5 would be 92. Plus 5 would be 97, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus 5 would be 277. Minus 5 would be 72. Minus 5 would be 67. So that means that 99.7% of the people in this class scored somewhere between 67 and 97. Is that a pretty tight fit? Yeah. So yeah. that. Yeah. Then that out of 100 points, I'd say that's pretty spread out. Now, spread out. if my standard deviation was 1, how would that set of data change? Oh, Everybody made closer together, right? Yeah. I don't what percentage of people, if this were the actual um, test scores, what percentage of people 60. made above a 92? Above Above the 92. 5%? Um, no, 3.7. Above the 92. Three How many standard deviations away is 92? 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. 
a 90 or better. You have to split that half in half. Ah, like, uh, you can't really do that because it look, it's fit. a curve. Hit me up on so you would just have to start at 90. Man, you said it's all the time. So, when you have a standard normal curve that is not is not a magic number. Magic numbers are easy. They fall on that chart. They're the same percentage every single time. When I get one that's not an even number of standard deviations away, I have to find what I call a z-score. Is that what the z-score is on the side? A z-score. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do as we go through these. I want you to kind of sketch your curve out, put your line, and shade the way we're looking. So greater than, I want to look this well, 90's about right here. And I'm gonna shade this way. And this is gonna be important in just a minute, you'll see why. To find a z-score, since that's not a magic number, I have a little formula. It's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That actually tells me exactly how many standard deviations away I am. Okay, if I'm 1.2 standard deviations away, 3.5. Well, we're going to use the table. All right, so here, here I have 82, ah, not 82, 90 minus 82 divided by 5. What do you get? Somebody. Five, which, is eight over five, right? which is 8 over 5, which is 1 and 3 fifths, which is 1.6. Yeah, 1.6. So now take a look at this standard normal table for probabilities for positive z-scores. The other side is for negative z-scores. You can get a positive, you can get a negative. If you look in the first column where it says z, it's got um, a ones place and a tenths place. And then across the top, the row across the top gives you the hundredths place. Okay, so if I want to look up 1.6, I go to 1.6, down, down, down to 1.6, and over to 0 .00, so it would be that first one. So what's that percentage? 0.9452, which is actually... 94.52%. Now, yeah, everybody make sure you can find that on here. 1.60. Oh, so we have to carry on this chart. You have to use this chart. Yeah, you have to use this chart. How do we know? No, you must memorize this entire chart for your time. Okay, now look. Notice something here. What I shaded clearly does not look like 94.5% of the data. Do we agree? Yeah, it's like job five. Look at, look at the way it's shaded on your chart. 5.4. Okay. Up top, it's shaded to the left. So it's giving me from this point all the way to the left. Well, if everything is 100%, Subtract. So it's a hundred percent minus ninety-four point five two percent, which is yes. That's the chance of you making an A or better. Does that make sense to you? Okay, let's look up another and make sure we can do it. Let's say, huh? Do what? Go in the, yeah, we're going to do one going several ways, yeah. Uh -huh. To the zero. Mm -hmm. Well, because my z-score was 1.6 whenever I calculated it here. So that's how I knew that's what I look up in the chart. How oh, you see the numbers across the top, 0 .00, 0 .01. If it was 1.61, then I'd go up to the 01 column. Let's, let's make sure we can all look. Everybody look up the number negative, negative 2.55 and tell me what's the value. 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 .0. Negative 2.55. 0 0.0054. Everybody see it? Zero, zero, five, four. 
No, wait, what? Negative 2.55. Because this is your ones and tens problem to find the second decimal So negative 2.5 and then over 2.5. So negative 2.55. Negative 2.5. No, don't tell me it's going to be. No, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's, what, what happens if we get a real life example of this? You just carry this around in your pocket? A survey. A survey of 20 colleges found that the average credit card debt for seniors was $3,450. That's not student loans, that's just average debt. Okay. The debt was normally distributed with a standard deviation, and this is pretty big if you look at it, 1175 It's pretty spread out. Some people owe a whole, whole lot, and some people don't owe a whole lot at all. So what I want to know is what's the probability that you get to be a senior in college and you owe um, more than $4,500? It doesn't line up. So because now if it lined up, if I started adding eleven seventy five and I hit this number, yeah. well, my life is easy. I can use yeah. the chart, right? But now you gotta use this chart. But it doesn't, so I must use the Z table. Let me do it. All right, so Z. Take your X, subtract your mean, uh, divide it by the standard deviation. What do you get? Like, can you get a Z value that's like out, like not in this chart? If it goes off it, then we call it zero. It's off in those tails because it goes up to three. Yeah. Past three, C mm -hmm. is, or I think it goes up to 3.9, doesn't it? It goes up to 3.4. 3.4. Past that, we round to zero because these tail ends are 0.5 or 0.15%. There's a small point, yeah. Yes. It's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Point eight one point eight nine. It doesn't really. Point is what? Point eight nine. Which ends up point eight nine. Okay, so I want you to understand what this is. That means I am point eight nine, so almost one standard deviation away. Okay, so I'm gonna shade here. If this is my x bar, this is plus 1, then I'm almost there, and I want to know about greater than. Okay? Now, since it's almost at 1, I'm thinking I'm going to get a number fairly close to what these three would add up to. But let's use the chart and see. Would you not put 0.89 in the chart? Yes, put 0.89 in the chart. So I go to point 0.8, and then I go all the way over to point 0.89. I mean, point 0.09. Point 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.
that you owe between, now that we have a number like this, between 2,000 and 4,000. I would have to draw it. Okay, so let's draw it. Here's my mean. This is 3450. 2000s down here, 4000s up here. I'm talking about area in between. So when you're talking about area in between, it gets a little bit stickier. Okay? I can look up the, the 4000 value. And I can find that, that amount, and I can look up the 2,000 value, okay? But remember, when I look it up, if I look up 4,000, then it's giving me all of this. And if I look up 2,000, it's giving me all of this. So how would I find the area between? That was a little more than what you have to do. If you look up 4,000, it gives you the green, right? Take that value. Look up 2,000, it oh, gives subtract. you the pink. Subtract the pink out. It'll leave you with what's in the middle. It's green. Green minus pink gives you white. What are you saying? Yeah. Green minus pink gives you white. So let's find the green first. At 4,000, I need to find the z-score. 4,000 minus 3, 4, 5, 11, 11, 11. Yeah, exactly. What do you get? I don't know. I don't know that yeah, in my I head. I my head. I can't. Uh, 0.89. Point eight nine. No, I don't Oh, I'm just listening to you. What is it? It's point what? Uh, eight. Yeah. Four six eight. Everybody look up point four six eight. Oh, we only go out two decimals. You're gonna need to round that. Point four seven. Look up point four seven in your table. Tell me what you get. Ben, point four seven table. Now go. Point six eight Exactly. Point six. Anyway, anyway, All right, that's my green amount. This green amount is 68.08%. That is not what I want. I need to find that to get what I want, but now I need to that find the track. 2,000 minus 3. Oh, so that's a negative Divided by Yeah, because I, it's, it's going the way I was shaded here. Negative. Um, I bet you get negative. Uh, it's negative 1.2. 1.2. 1.2. 1.2. Look up negative. It's not 1.2? No. It is not. It is? Okay. Yeah. All right. Look up negative 1.2 in your chart and tell me what you get. Oh, 1.151. So that tells me that this amount is 11.51%. So again, if I want the white. You got to take 68 and then you want 68 minus 11.51, which gives you about, um, uh, let me think, 56, 56. 56. 56. 56. Point something. Three. <laughs> You're doing this in your head. Put it on the calculator. 56.53. 